As we speak, the city of homes and other areas are being shelled. UN observers have risked their lives to report to the world on what they have seen. They have reported armed assaults on civilians, execution-style killings, and opposition forces firing from inside hospitals. Across this geography of conflict, we simply must do more. We must do more to protect women and children in particular, more to prevent attacks against the journalists, more to save innocent lives. Schools have been raided and used as military bases and detention centers. Hospitals and health facilities have been targeted. Anti-government groups are also reportedly responsible for violations, including torture, summary executions, and abductions. Residents in the most affected areas are often unable to access water, food, or medical care. It's imperative that civilians who wish to leave areas of fighting be allowed to do so safely. The regime has now killed around 15,000 Syrian civilians. That is why the Joint Special Envoy's six-point plan and two resolutions of this council have demanded the withdrawal of Syrian troops and heavy weapons in order to facilitate a sustained reduction in violence. Without this first step, the violence on all sides will continue. The UN supervision mission will not be able to resume its operations and the Annan plan will fail. The recent suspension of operations by the UN supervision mission in Syria is a testament to the gravity of the situation. It is a shame that this council continues to stand by rather than to stand up. We must take meaningful steps, including by imposing binding sanctions under Chapter 7, to pressure the Syrian regime to comply with the Joint Special Envoy's six-point plan and work towards a political transition that meets the legitimate aspirations of the Syrian people. Your presence is an affirmation.